The Mists of Albion, the newest edition in Albion Online, the newest type of content in Albion Online that is not showcased at all by Albion's tutorial. And that is where Mogden, the friendly wizard, the friendly neighborhood wizard, I should say, comes in to explain you everything you need to know about the mists. First of all, what are the mists? It's a pretty hard quest for me to try to define the mists specifically, other than just saying, hey, it's a new zone. So I want to be a little bit more specific. Let me explain it to you like this. In Albion Line, there's multiple types of group sizes. You can have a, a solo player, you can have a small group player, and you can have a Zerg player. Now, of course, there's also in-betweens, but let's just have it boiled down so it's easier to explain. For all of those types of players, there is a specific type of realm. For the Zerg player, like the massive group player, there is the open world. The open world is basically Zergland. For the smaller group player, but that's still not a solo player, you have the Roads of Avalon, which again, it's a different thing in itself. Now, uh, I'm not saying that you can only go in the roads or only go in the open worlds if you are with a group, because as you can see, I am solo and I am in the open world. I'm just saying that more often than not here I'm going to encounter big groups. So as a solo player, even though I can play here and I am actually rewarded by playing here, I'm going to have a disadvantage in the Roads of Avalon. Same thing, I can go as a solo player, but the highest rewards and the content itself is designed for a smaller group of up to seven people. Now what is there for us solo players? Well, the answer was provided in the last edition in Albion Online. We have the Mists. The Mists show up through will-o'-wisps, basically lost creatures that are in an in-between state between two uh, states of existence. They are lost in the middle of the open world. You can find them in the yellow zone, in the red zone, and in the black zone. Yellow zone mists are non-lethal zones, whereas red zone and black zone mists are all lethal. They all have different rarities that you can see above, uh, I mean, under their name. This one is common, which you can expect it's the most common type of mist. Now, uh, this is how you enter the mist. You have two ways of entering. First of all, you can enter through finding a will-o'-wisp, scaring it away, and just entering it. So you just get the wisp away and this portal opens. Now, some information about this, it shows the type of region you're going through. It's a black zone, it shows the rarity and it shows how fast this closes in. This closes either when the timer runs out or when you go through. This is the solo mist, the mist. That is for one single player. You also have a two players option, which is called the greater mists. It's uh, basically bigger and it has a different name. You can enter this mist this way just by finding a Will-O-Wisp or you can go to Brasidian, which is the city in the mist. We're gonna get back to that in a second. First of all, let me explain what you're gonna be finding in the mists. Greetings, my fellow viewers. Fret not, for I am Mogdan's trusty hat and I come bearing good news. If you enjoy watching my master's content on YouTube, then you will be pleased to know that it's all recorded live on Twitch. By joining us on Twitch, you'll not only get a sneak peek of upcoming videos, but also have the opportunity to win giveaways and drops and just hang out with a lively and amazing community. So come on over and join us now. We're most likely live at this very moment. Click the link in the description down below or in the pinned comment to join us. The first thing that you're going to be seeing is the variety of resources. You're going to notice that you find every single type of resource compared to a black zone where you find only specific resources depending on the biome you are watching basically. So you can see this, it's already a pretty big advantage. This is kind of like the roads in terms of that. Another thing that you will notice is the specific mobs that you've seen in solo dungeons, in open world and stuff like that. Basically, the fantasy behind this is that this is an area engulfed by mists. This is basically an open world engulfed by mists. Because of that, you will find all the players named as Mysterious Stranger. This is not the player's name. For him, I also show up as a Mysterious Stranger. I, the reason it's a mysterious stranger is because the mist is too dense for me to make eye contact and to see which person I'm looking at. So I cannot really tell the name of the person. That's why everybody shows up as a mysterious stranger. Upon killing them, or if you find somebody cheating and you report them, the name will show up for the devs or for you in your death or kill count. Like you cannot see them before you kill them basically. Another thing that you will notice is that you have a specific faction of mobs. This faction of mobs is basically everywhere in the mists. Uh, there's uh, like all the mobs can be present here, but the only mobs that are native to this area are the undead for reasons that tie up in the lore of Albion quite nicely. Every other mob is basically an invader, an invader that keeps the mists trapped. As you guys can see right there, sometimes even the undead forget uh, their allegiance 
and they also keep the mists trapped. While you are in the mists, you have an extra resource that you want to keep track of, at least whenever you go in for the first time, and that is the Brazilian Standing. Brazilian Standing that you will need to be able to unlock the hidden city in the mists. To unlock the Brazilian, um, the Brazilian city, all you have to do is just help the wisps. Basically, the fantasy behind this is the following. You entered in the realm of the mists, in the realm of the will-o'-wisps, and you basically invaded their realm. You gotta gain their trust and show that it's actually worth it for the mists or for the will-o'-wisps to actually show you Brazilian. You gotta gain their trust, you gotta gain the will-o'-wisps trust. And you do that by just helping them. So whenever you see a caged will-o'-wisp, just go there and free it. Whenever you see a mob camp, like basically a settlement of invaders, you gotta go and clear the mob camp. And all of those things will add up to your Brazilian standing, thus making the mists on, and the will o wisps become your friend. This is how a cage wisp looks like. You gotta kill the mobs that are around. Usually there's gonna be more mobs around, but it depends. It can also be one mob, it can also be a boss mob, it can be just a normal non-enchanted mob. And you gotta click on it, and upon clicking on it, you will receive fame and Brazilian standing. This is really good for both specking yourself up and just making the Brazilian standing that you so much need. Another thing that helps you with Brazilian standing are actually the mist camps. You won't see the mist camps on the map. You will just see like a weird formation of rocks that looks like a mist camp. But the second you step close, you start seeing both the mist camp on the map and the objective that you have to do. Basically, every single time is the same thing. You gotta go and complete the mist camp by just killing the mobs that are in it straight up. Just kill all the mobs, and upon killing them, I mean all the mobs, kill enough mobs to fill this bar up. Whenever you fill this bar up, a chest that you can actually see over here uh, will be opened. The rarity of the chest and the contents of the chest are instanced, meaning that for you, you have your own chest that nobody can interact with. If there's 10 people around you, and you have the chest opened, but you didn't manage, I mean, you have the chest unlocked, but you didn't manage to open it, that chest is yours. So you can go away, nobody's gonna be able to steal anything from that chest, it's yours. Furthermore, let's say there's one more person around. You complete the camp and that person completes the camp at the same exact second. Your chest might be green, whereas that person's chest might be legendary. The rarity and the contents are fully instance. Another thing that you can find in the mist, throughout the mist themselves, you will be able to see an, uh, other types of will-o'-wisps. And another thing that you need to pay attention to, you are gonna notice that in the trees, in some trees at least, there's gonna be will-o'-wisps that are just hanging there. Those will-o'-wisps will do something very interesting that I'm gonna show to you in a second. Another thing that you can find in the mists are actually those unstable portal. It looks like a rose portal, but it might lead you anywhere. You cannot see where it leads you unless you got close to it. So let's get close to this one and see where it leads us. All right, once you get close to the rose portal, this is what you're going to find and you're going to be able to see where this leads you. This is a red region of Highlands of Tier 6. And you can even see the map, Garofell, right here. So yeah, you can, uh, this can lead you anywhere, both red zones, yellow zones, whatever. It can be anywhere uh, and everywhere. I, I think except Roads of Avalon. I don't think it can actually lead you to a Road of Avalon. Now, another thing that you need to know about the mists is that there is no form of matchmaking and or fairness. This is not a fair ground. This is not meant to provide an honorable arena in which you compete with another honorable person. No. This is an alternative to the open world for the solo player. You cannot play in the... I mean, you cannot be competitive as a solo player in the open world because of the amount of Zergs. You cannot be competitive in the roads because of the amount of small, uh, small scale groups. But you can be competitive in the mists because you just have other solo players that cannot team up. They cannot inspect each other, they cannot know anything about each other except what they're wearing and what's visible to them. You cannot inspect people over here, they all show up as mysterious strangers. Now let me show you what happens when you complete a camp. Let me show you what happens when you complete a camp. First of all, the treasure chest is always going to be somewhere in the middle of the camp. Oh, I thought this guy died. Oh, I've been very happy about that. So it's always going to be somewhere in the middle of the camp. And it's, the size will vary from medium to small. That's kind of what you what you need to know about this. Oh wait, I have the wrong spells. I mean, let's just go with this. They're easy mobs. The main reason you want to go here for is the PvP. 
Now of course you can go here for all sorts of different reasons, but the PvP is basically the best reason to go here for. I don't know what this guy is doing. I have no idea what this guy is doing. But he ain't surviving, that's sure. I mean, he might, because I didn't have the, the Pudge W. He's a new player though, he's a new player. Should we, should we let him go? Yeah, he's running the wrong way and everything. <laughs> he's really panicking. Should we let him? Should we let him survive, chat? I don't know. Should we have some mercy? I guess the answer is no. I guess the answer is no. Hey, 160k, that is not bad at all. Another thing that you can do to keep yourself a little bit safer is instead of clearing the mobs in the camp, clear the mobs right outside of the camp. As long as this shows up, it's gonna count. As long as this shows up, it's gonna count. And another thing that you need to know is that this progress will save. So right now... Is he actually wanting to fight? Why would you want to fight, man? He gave up. Alright, that's about right. That's about what I've expected. Oh, I was hoping he would pop his F. I don't know why he wanted to fight, but I'll take it. But I'll take it. And look at this. It's a blue chest, which is pretty good, actually. This can vary from green, blue, uh, purple, and legendary. Just like normal chests do. The only difference being that the green chests will always have only tomes. So nothing more than tomes, which are those books right here that you can consume to get fame. Uh, depending on the size of the chest, they're going to be blue tomes like tier 4 tomes or tier 3 tomes now something that helps you a lot as a player in the mists is the translucent map that you open on pc by pressing shift n by default or by dragging and dropping the mini map the reason you want to play with this one is because if you pay attention you will see the nightfall abbey all right boys another thing that is present in the mists besides the camps and the cage willow wisps first of all as you've noticed resource hotspots but besides that there are certain objectives that will spawn those objectives will spawn totally randomly and it is entirely possible that when you join the mists the objectives have already been spawned and completed so that's important that you take note of this first of all the first objective i'm going to be explaining the ones that show on the map first of all you have the turbulent wisps basically at set points a thing is gonna spawn on the map. I, I guess I should explain it when I when I see it. Yeah. Well, I guess by the time the big objectives show up on the map, so I can show it to you, the, so I can show them to you, chat. Let me talk a little bit about the smaller objectives. First of all, you can find crystal spiders, but smaller versions that you can actually solo. They are called crystal spiderlings, and they have pretty good loot. Like whenever you find one of those, you know you're hitting it big in terms of the bank. Another thing that you can find are mist coffers. The coffers are chests that will show up once you get close to them. The same way the spiders work. Like you only see them once you get close to them. They don't show up on the global map. They show up while you are in a close radius to them. Kind of like this camp does not show up until I actually get close to it when it starts popping on the map. As you can see right here. The difference is that those coffers and those crystal spiders have a much larger radius, making it easy for you to find them if you play with a translucent map. Another thing that you can find, and this is not showing on the map, this you actually ha just have to go and explore, are the mist bosses. And there are three different types of bosses that drops the ingredients required to be able to craft the legendary armors. There's a leather armor, a plate armor, and a cloth armor. There's a dragon, there's a griffin, and there's a spider that you can kill. They're pretty tough mobs to kill, but you can easily best them with a 4.1 set if you have the right set with you. 
Unfortunately, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show you those because they're quite rare. You only see those bosses in uncommon or higher rarity mists. The mist can go from common to uncommon to uh, rare, epic and legendary. In the common mists you find pretty common stuff and in the legendary mist you find even 8.3 gathering materials. So you can really hit it big if you have tools with you or if you're ready for a good good fight in the legendary mists. And keep in mind there's no matchmaking so the 4.1 players can entirely occupy um, a legendary mist. Oh and talking about coffers, look at this, we're in luck chat, this is how the coffer shows up like and as you can see now that I've discovered it, it's gonna have a bigger radius, but uh, it will disappear on the map. Why? Well, I don't think it actually has a bigger radius. So this is about the radius that you can expect from the cover. Th 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 that's about it right here. On all the sides. Can imagine like a circle around it. This uh, coffer has a timer, it doesn't show up on the global map, and it acts like a normal chest. This is actually perfect timing that I managed to find one of those. And would you look at this? It's actually a blue one. Let's go, chat. Now I just need to find a spider so I can show you this. If I don't, it plays off of the same rules as the cover, so keep that in mind. The good thing about this, compared to the other treasure chests that are gonna spawn and that are gonna show up on the map, is just that. This one does not show up on the map. So that means that if you find one that's kind of like in a corner like I did right here, it's entirely possible that you are the only one who found that. Talking about objectives that don't show up on the map, but it's kind of over. Let's talk about the ones that show up on the map. This is called a Turbulent Wisp. Let me explain what it is once I get there. First of all, before I get there actually, I need to say that this is a hotspot for 8.4 players. So you need to be very aware of the fact that you might very possibly find 8.4 players over here. But if you don't, this is what you're gonna find. This is a place through which a mist that is lost will spawn in 52 seconds. Uh, it takes about one point, uh, I, I think it's one minute and a half or something like that, or two minutes for this to spawn. And uh, what you can do with it, uh, I hope I get the chance to show it to you. If not, I will explain. So check this out, check this out. Whenever this timer runs out, a mist falls out. And you can pick up this mist and you have to deliver it in a certain spot. I mean, I have nothing to risk, basically. I, I don't know why, why he ran like that. So you pick up this mist and you have to deliver it over there. All right, boys, all right, boys, I'm very happy that I can actually show you what happens once you deliver this. So again, you pick it up and you have to deliver it and the spot shows up on the map only for you. Only for the person keeping the mist. Like, if I don't keep it, I don't see this spot anymore and it doesn't even show up. So you go here and you deliver this mist and upon delivering it, you receive, first of all, fame, a Brazilian favor and stuff like that. I mean, Brazilian reputation. And on top of that, you receive favor. Favor that can be exchanged for some pretty good stuff that I'm about to show you in a second. Another thing that can show up on the map, just like the Turbulent Wisp showed up on the map, is a chest. A chest that everybody can see. The difference between those is that, I mean, between those and the chest that are proximity based, is that this chest shows up on the whole map and it's actually called a chest. The other one that shows up just when you're close to it is called a coffer. And that appears only whenever you're close to it. Okay, so once in a while, whenever the mist starts getting denser and denser and denser, this timer is gonna show up. I think it's once every 15 minutes. I don't think a mist map can stay open for more than 50 to 20 minutes, something like that, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, and yeah, this timer is gonna signal the fact that the mist starts to get denser and denser and you will have to escape. There are multiple ways of escaping. First of all, you can just not do anything, in which case you will get kicked out of the mist to the same spot to which you've entered from. Second of all, you can just use one of those exits over here that will take you in the same spot to which you've entered from. Do you remember those will-o'-wisps that were hanging in trees? Well, once the mists and the uh, mist itself starts closing in and becoming denser and denser and denser, those things will float down from the trees and you will be able to take them just like you normally do. What I want you to keep in mind is that at this time, you have the highest chances of actually finding an enchanted Will-O-Wisps because of the fact that there's just so many of them. And if you just look around a little bit, you should be able to find something worthwhile. A good general rule of thumb is whenever you locate a Will-O-Wisp, doesn't matter the rarity, if you don't like it, don't pop it. Remember the spot and lurk around a little bit more trying to find another one. If you don't find another one, you go back to it. If you do find another one that's better, then you go in that one. It's a win-win situation. So try to keep them up 
until you find something worthwhile. If you do find something worthwhile, you go in. If you don't, you don't go in. And with that out of the way, that's about everything that you need to know about the mists themselves. Everything else that I need to explain, I need to explain in a different place which is the hidden city in the mists. So let's go over there and let's see how this goes. Once you manage to gain the trust of the Will-O-Wisps, they will show you a hidden secret, the hidden city in the mists. Now, a whole video can actually be made about this city, but there are some things that I can point out right away. First of all, this is a two-level city. Second of all, to get to this city, you need to have 50k Brazilian reputation. Brazilian reputation that you can unlock very easily by, fo by uh, following the guides that I've made on the topic. It's just basically playing the mists in a certain way that ensures the fact that you can unlock this as fast as possible. I managed to unlock it in two hours, so uh, yeah, and possibly you could do it even faster without engaging in PvP or nothing like that. Once you get yourself to 50k Brazilian reputation, you need to find the city in the mists that again I've covered in a different video. It's basically a portal that will show up in the mists if you keep chaining them over and over again and it does have a higher chance to show up in yellow zone mists. This city, as I've mentioned, has two levels. The level in which we've been on so far. This level is very, very, very interesting. First of all, it has city plots. Right now they're empty because it's reset day, but uh, they're gonna be built up very, very soon again. Second of all, this area has maps. Certain maps that you can go through so there's three of them, there, there's four of them, sorry. Uh, three of them are red zones, one of them is a yellow zone. The names, I should actually turn this off so you can see the names. So I, I'm with the streamer mode on, so check this out. Those maps act like normal maps, but they look very much like the mist maps. The only difference is that they are permanent. Something that you need to know about this is that you will find on this level, very importantly, the travel planner and the repair station, which for some reason it's not marked. I don't know why it's not marked, but it's over here. You will be able to also find a portal that uh, leads you to the market and one that leads you to the bank. Through this travel planner, you can teleport to any city. It's just a pretty high cost. The same cost that it would take for you to teleport from, let's say, Tedford to Limhurst. So the highest cost between cities. Now let me show you around the bank and uh, the market is over there. This is how it looks like. You have the bank over there and this is the top layer of Brazilian. In the top layer of Brazilian, things get interesting. First of all, you have an infinite access to mists. You have a, what I like to call an unstable mists portal that is always going to take you to a common mist. So that means that you don't have to look for one. That means that if you want to go with a very expensive set, you don't have to risk that set inside the mist. You can access solo non lethals, solo lethals and dual lethals and this just makes me wish that something like this would be done for corrupted dungeons as well. Another thing that you can find over here is an unstable road portal. The same type of unstable road portal that you've seen in the mists themselves. The only difference being that this portal leads you to the roads of Avalon. What's amazing about this is that it leads you at random spots. You don't know where it's gonna be. So that means that you might be in a deep road that nobody explored for ages and you're gonna get amazing resources. However, that also means that you might be in a road right next to the yellow zone in uh, Limhurst. You know what I mean? Like it's random, which can be very good sometimes, but very bad some other times. The good thing is that if you travel to one of those roads, you have a 50% reduction uh, to travel back to Brazilian. So it's actually gonna be worth it travel back even though you're in the roads which you normally don't want to be doing while you are in the roads like if you just go in the roads through let's say you are in fort sterling and you go in the black zone and you enter a road the travel back would be very expensive well the travel back if you've entered through brazilian is going to be very cheap but it's going to take you back in brazilian and another thing that i want to show you for brazilian itself again brazilian will be detailed in a different video is this npc right here which you can use favor which is the currency that i showed you over here to buy different things. Favor you get by doing whatever activity in the mists. Literally, whatever. Clearing the camps and um, uh, doing big map objectives, like let's say a crystal spider or something like that, will award you the most favor. And opening a chest even. Another thing that you can do with favor, you can go to this NPC right here that you can also find in the Conqueror's Hall. And in the last tab, you can see different things. You can buy siphoned energy for easy silver. You can buy a chest for a chance of getting a mammoth. Or you can buy tomes to level up a weapon that maybe you find too tedious to use uh, itself. Before I end this, I want to answer a misconception that some people might have. Which is, oh man, but I cannot do mists if I don't have high IP gear. You absolutely can. I purposely recorded this whole video with a 4.1 set. And as you guys can see, 
I was very much able to do mists. Now, that doesn't mean that you can only run with 4.1. You should bring higher tier IP, but this just goes to show that you can absolutely be somewhat competitive even in 4.1. That's about everything that you need to know about the mists. Now, there are some things that you might want to know to keep yourself safe in the mists. But that is a topic for a different video. That is a topic for a different video and a different discussion. Now, I hope I covered everything. May you have a wonderful adventure in the mists of Albion Online. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash Mogdan. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love you all.